Hi, this is uh, Jim Smith back again with the 1000. People have been asking, like, why did we start in this project? And hanging around some of the younger people, I realized that our history isn't known, and people that don't write history are called losers. And certainly, the record we've had in the last 50 years has been persistent resistance to the agendas being put forward, and we're winners. We've won left, right, and center. And I think it's important we tell those because the modern medium is, is this what you're seeing now, the video. So instead of writing a book that nobody will read, I'm hoping to do some videos that people will talk to. Talk to you about some of our heroes because, again, as I said in the case of Stan Beaumont, we're not going to get any medals, so we have to do it ourselves if anybody does it. And these were good guys that fought hard. Uh, one of the things I'd like to talk to you about, about the old days that you might find interesting is here in Canada we have two forms of census form. We have the long form which is very long, nasty, and intrusive. And then the short form tells you a little bit about well, who you are as a Canadian. Uh, the long form has been made optional. It's very controversial in, in Canada, but uh, every Canadian should be well in favor of the uh, uh, abolition of the long form. And I'll tell you why. 1972 census, uh, again, remember we're 1968, the, the, uh, the changes to the criminal code uh, things are really are really starting to boil in, in uh, Ottawa in our capital, and uh, the long-term census, lo and behold, comes out with a whole bunch of questions on firearms. And that was pretty odd because uh, pretty well all my friends that had guns that had restricted firearms, i.e., pistols at the time, I uh, got that form, and very few other people got them. So we've kind of wondered what they were doing. Very heavy paranoia. 1972, ladies and gentlemen, people already had it figured out pretty well what was going on. And you had this dilemma. So at that time, I had 16 registered restricted firearms, uh, all, all handguns in my target shooting collection. And I collected single shot rifles. So I had a fair number of nice old, you know, uh, Remington rolling blocks and sharps and stuff like that. And when the time came to answer that, and I'll admit this, this might be against the law, and there's probably no, 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 uh, statute of limitations, knowing how Canadian law works. But I told them I had one rifle, one, one shotgun, and one twenty two plus my pistols. When I went down to the Edmonton Gun Show shortly after that came out, lo and behold, I found all my friends did the same thing. So this is why the federal government in Canada thought there were seven million firearms, because everything was extrapolated from that. Yet, Dave Tomlinson, a main name you'll hear again and again, we're going to do a, a full segment on Dave once I get some pictures to show you. Uh, sat down and did the hard work that, of course, the bureaucrats wouldn't do. He went through the old uh, import uh, information from Stats Canada. He also checked on guns that had been surplused within the country from the Canadian military. Now, everybody in Canada is familiar with the Lee Enfield 303 surplus situation. But prior to that, we'd surplused tens of thousands of Ross rifles. And although the Ross rifle has a bad reputation as a combat arm, as a civilian firearm, they're almost indestructible, and they're still hanging around out there in great numbers. And before that, we'd surplused a whole bunch of uh, Snyder Enfields, which had been used uh, in combat in Canada, the Real Rebellion of 1885, and they're long obsolete in the rest of the world. They're better than what the rebels had. And uh, we even got our hands on some uh, brown bass muskets converted to percussion that had been used for militia before that. None of these guns had ever been put into the mix that the federal government had been looking after, at. And then there was just a simple matter of private uh, importations in those days. Very few records were kept. Uh, so we came up with the idea there's probably 20 million firearms in Canada. And that was, oh gosh, 20 years ago now. So I would say the numbers probably got up two and a half, three million. So when you hear about the police crowing about getting 300 guns off the street with a firearms amnesty. Understand, that's an, an afternoon uh, business in the Canadian firearms industry. We've got more gun owners than we've ever had before. We've got more firearms than we've ever had before. And we've got less firearms crime than we've ever had before, which goes to show that we know what we're doing and everything's working fairly well. One of the misuses of firearms that we had a lot of problems with in the, in the good old days back when I was young were hunting accidents. You know, uh, there was a lot of stupidity in the hunting range. There still is. So we, the, the, the citizens, through the various fish and game organizations, including the Alberta Fish and Game, who I belonged to at the time, started uh, a voluntary program of hunter training. And this worked so well at reducing the, uh, the, the death and injury on the hunting ranges that the government took it over. Now to hear them think it's a government program. But no, that was us, the sportsmen, that did that. And that's typical if the government really, want, really, really wanted to do something about this place, if they really, really wanted to make a change, they would consult us, 
because we are the experts. So why don't they can consult us? You've got to believe there's an agenda. Thanks. I'll talk to you more in a minute.